Salam everyone, it's Shaima here. Um, I am very, very happy to be working with you all and super excited to be delivering the first training video. So I'm just gonna cover some topics here quite high level and if you would like any more information on any of them or if anything becomes an issue or something you'd like to delve deeper in as you're working with clients, please do reach out to me. I'm also happy to deliver more specific training on any of these topics if needed. So the very first thing that you need to adhere to, and this really out of everything is the most important, is confidentiality. So therapist-client confidentiality is the absolute paramount center of all the work that you're going to be doing. It's absolutely vital that you adhere to the confidentiality rules and that you respect these at all times. Now, please do review the rules and make sure that you're happy with how it's going to affect your work and how it's going to affect you as a therapist. Because ultimately, yes, you are caring for the client, but you also have to make sure you care for yourself. And this means that if you are concerned that a client interaction is going to cause you distress for whatever reason, maybe it'll be a trigger point for you for something you yourself is working on. Maybe it'll be a particularly emotional subject. Maybe it'll be something quite controversial or something just quite emotive. You need to be sure that you can uh, deal with that within the bounds of the confidentiality. So within the bounds of whoever you're permitted to speak to for that case, if that's anyone. So please do check, speak to your colleagues if you have any doubts. Make sure you know the rules and make sure you do adhere to them because this has very, very severe legal and moral and medical implications for the client. So they need to know absolutely 100% that they can trust you to abide by the confidentiality. So that is point one. Point two is projection. So this is when a client comes to you with an issue and you immediately think, oh, I've gone through a very similar thing, let me give them some advice. Now, this is a natural thing for us to react with, but just remember, the client is a completely separate person. Their experience of life is not going to be like anybody else's in this world. So yours and their experience is completely different. So please avoid giving them advice based on your own personal experience. Please avoid thinking, oh, well, you know, they're looking for a job, for example. I found a job here. Let me advise them to do that. It's all about just approaching the client from their own perspective and making sure that they solve their own issues. This is what therapy is about. You're not there to tell them what to do. You are there to support them through what they're going through. So again, if you need any further tips on this, because this can be a tricky concept to abide by, please uh, reach out to me or to anybody else for more information. But always make sure the client finds the answer from within themselves. And that might be something completely different to how you would handle have handled a situation. So avoid getting them to do what you would do. <laughs> Just make sure that they do what's best for them. Okay, um, biases and discrimination. Now this is really important. Um, as you interact with people, you're going to find that your initial reaction to things may be based on a certain uh, pre-wired way of thinking. So for example, you may automatically assume that if they mention their driver, for example, that that driver is a male. Um, there are bias biases that are inherent present with our, inherently present within us. There are biases that we um, gather based on our culture. There are biases that we will have picked up because of our family upbringing, because of the friendship circles. We, I mean, having biases is natural, and I'm not going to try and tell you to absolutely erase all bias from your life because I don't think that's even possible. We all are biased or even discriminatory to an extent. I think the main thing is to always question, to try and never assume. If they tell you that they are in a relationship, please do not assume it is with somebody of the opposite gender. Please always be open-minded. If you don't know what a certain situation is, please ask and ask sensitively. For example, if a client talks to you about a health issue, just ask them very gently, well, what did your doctor say? And they will then tell you, oh, I haven't been to the doctor or my doctor said this. Please don't assume that either they have or haven't been to the doctor or any of these, any of these other things because if a client feels that you have a bias or you have a discrimination, that can impact a lot on the trust. 
so just be as open-minded as possible and avoid any biases even just based on your own opinion about things um, remember it's about the client um, giving advice I already talked about in terms of telling clients what to do please do avoid that it will sometimes be tempting especially if you think oh this is a really easy problem to solve I just need to tell them to do this please don't um, apart from anything else it can backfire on you as a therapist if the advice for whatever reason doesn't happen the way they want it to so just practice practice on your family and friends if you need to just not giving advice but saying to the client what do you think how does this land with you have you thought about this that and the other but without ever directly saying I think you should do this why don't you do that you know this is a recommended course of action we don't want any of that um, becoming over invested now again please do review guidelines whilst you may have long-term clients or clients that you see periodically um, these people are not your friends remember they're not your family members I mean of course there will be emotional bonds in places but these should be left at the door um, once you leave for the day once you leave your role uh, in terms of your every day when you leave your role um, if you do find that a particular client is playing on your mind if you find you're thinking about them more than is professionally what professionally feels right and you will know you will have an instinct as to what feels right or not um, if you find that you know you're going about your daily life and there's these reminders of the client popping up again more than normal you know there will of course be reminders of clients and that's fair enough but if it feels like it's becoming an emotion emotionally taxing or you know you find yourself having feelings that you're not quite sure if they're appropriate or not in terms of anything you know even if you're just feeling upset all the time when you think of this particular client um, please do speak to a senior colleague about this it may just be that there's certain interventions that need to be put in place in order for you to work with them or it may mean that you just need to be swapped off the client and another person put on and that is absolutely fine this happens professionally um, and also if there's any conflict of interest if you think a client may be a distant relative or anything like that please do let one of us know because it's very important for your own protection and for the client's protection that measures are put in place. Um, on that note, if there's ever a temptation to start a relationship with a client, be it romantic or friendship or otherwise, um, please do speak to one of us because there's very, very strict rules around this and if you are ever found to be doing anything without our knowledge again it has very very serious legal implications both for you and potentially for the client so i know this is a sensitive issue and at, at this point you may be thinking what are you talking about that's never going to happen but in client therapist relationships are emotionally tight in a way and that has to be governed in the realms of professional um, rules so please do speak with us if ever you have any feelings that seem to be going outside the realms of being professional. Um, seeking your own therapy. So this is going to be a very intense process. I know you've all been trained and I know you are um, experienced to an extent. You've worked with clients before, some of you may have. It's very, very important that you understand that you may take on some of the client's feelings or you may take on some of their projections without even meaning to and what can really really help is having a client of your own uh, sorry having a therapist of your own because remember we're all evolving so even though for example I work as a therapist and I have clients it by no means means that oh that means I'm done you know I'm psychologically advanced and I never have to work on myself psychologically again of course not I have several coaches, several mentors, several therapists who I see just so I can constantly be sure that I'm on top of my game psychologically and that means I'm the best possible help I can be to my clients. So when I'm at my best, I can really be my best for them. 
and it's very important that you take that on too and you understand that okay maybe I have issues around XYZ I'm gonna to speak to a therapist about it it's it's not gonna be fixed and I'm not asking you to fix everything um, but having that dialogue about it and just being open-minded about constantly self-developing that's all we're asking from you just constantly striving to be everything you can be which I know you already have in you again if you want any more guidance around this please have a chat with me always happy to talk and there are some other issues in terms of safeguarding referring to third parties again any questions queries you have around the um, umang rules then please um, consult one of us we're going to give you a list of material that you're going to be uh, reviewing anyway so a lot of the information is going to be in there but there will be things that we may have missed or there will be things that come up that you're not sure about so I guess the most important takeaway message I have from all of this is just to keep an open dialogue with us. You know, nothing is off limits, honestly. Please do anything you need to talk about. Please don't feel like, oh, I can't talk to them about it because we are here. And if you ever feel in a vulnerable situation with a client, for example, if they say something to you and you feel, oh, that wasn't quite appropriate, or if they start talking to you in a way and you feel like, oh, um, I'm not entirely sure if I should be speaking with them about this. That's the time when you come to us. There may be situations in which, for example, they have an issue in an intimate relationship and they may be talking to you about that intimate relationship. They may be giving you details. There is a certain level of detail which is appropriate and there is a certain level of detail which is not. And having worked on helplines before, we have very strict rules around this. Um, so again, um, I mean, this is a very specific situation, but if you do come across anything like that or even any other, you know, example where they may be giving you extreme detail about a situation, maybe a violent situation or anything like that, and you feel like it's just too much or it's not necessary for you to give the therapy, then it's perfectly within your right to put a boundary up and if you need guidance on how to assert that boundary or if you want one of us to intervene and help you assert that boundary then that is what we are here for so that is a very quick whistle top introductory um training on ethics and things to consider um like i say we'll be giving you more material for you to review and i will be happy to deliver more training to give you further guidance on this but in the meantime if there's any any questions you have, please reach out to us. Thank you so much. Bye.